Hello, I'm Mark Garner, the VFD Specialist for ES&E. In this video, we will be going over how to use the PowerFlix 520 Series PID mode with trim capabilities. But before we get started, please be sure to subscribe to ES&E TV YouTube channel for more automation content. PID stands for Proportional, Integral, Derivative, and are control loop features built into the PowerFlex 520 series of drives. The PID loop is used to maintain a process feedback such as pressure, flow, or tension at a desired set point. The PID loop works by subtracting the PID feedback from a reference and generating the error value. The PID loop reacts to the error based on the PID gains and outputs a frequency to try to reduce the error value to zero. It's important to note that the PowerFlex 523 has one PID control loop, while the PowerFlex 525 has two PID control loops. However, with the 525, they can only be used one at a time. Two basic configuration examples where the PID loop may be used are exclusive control and trim control. In exclusive control, the speed reference becomes zero and the PID output becomes the entire frequency command. Taking a pumping application for example, the PID reference equals the desired system pressure set point. The pressure transducer signal provides the PID feedback to the drive. Fluctuations in actual system pressure due to changes in flow result in a PID error value. The drive output frequency increases or decreases to vary motor shaft speed to correct the PID error value. The desired system pressure set point is maintained as valves in the system are open and closed, causing changes in flow. In trim control, the PID output is added to the speed reference. In this example of a winder application, the PID reference equals the equilibrium set point. The dancer potentiometer signal provides PID feedback to the drive. Fluctuations in tension result in PID error value. The master speed reference sets the wind, unwind speed. As tension increases or decreases during the winding, the speed reference is trimmed to compensate. Tension is maintained near the equilibrium set point. Now we're going to demonstrate the PID with trim control. As we open up your CCW software, as you can see under the setup wizard, you go under speed control and you can see that our speed reference is set for PID1 output. Our select is going to be PID set point. Our PID feedback select is going to be 0 to 10 volts. It's going to be our analog input. And we're actually going to trim on the keypad frequency. The keypad frequency is going to be set for 40 hertz. We're going to be able to trim, go up and go down three hertz. Okay, we're going to start the drive. The keypad frequency is set for 40 hertz, as you can see. The analog input here is set for five volts. As I increase the voltage of the analog input, you'll notice that the frequency is going down. So we're actually slowing the motor. We'll keep increasing. As you can see, it will not go below 37 hertz, which is three hertz below the 40. As I decrease the five volts, we'll go back to 40 hertz. And as I keep decreasing, the frequency will rise and the speed will increase. But note, we will not go above 43 hertz. That is PID with trim control. Remember that PID tuning can be a bit complex and might require some trial and error to achieve optimal results. I highly recommend consulting the PowerFlex 525 user manual and any relevant application notes to detailed instructions on setting up PID control specific to your application. Having a solid understanding of PID control theory will greatly help in achieving effective and stable control of your processes. Thank you for watching, and if you need further assistance, please reach out to your local ES&E account manager or automation specialist.